I was going to do a PowerPoint, but this is easy. <laughs> this is easier. So the, what we're, we're talking about, how to be a better moderator. How many of you want to get up and moderate these packages that come in? How many are excited about doing that? <clears throat> Probably not many. Maybe a couple go, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. Most people don't want to get up and do the moderator game. So I don't know why you're all sitting in here. But it's good that you are, because this is more about you being a better presenter, you being a better counselor, you getting more listings, you making more profit, than it is about being a better moderator. Uh, because if you are a good moderator, those other things just kind of come along. So we're going to talk about understanding our marketplace, what it is we do here that's different than other marketplaces. We're going to talk about the three parts of this marketplace, or the three people groups. I like a lot of interaction. So tell me, who are the three people groups that we're going to be talking about today? And I'll give you a hint. One of them is the moderator. Who are the other two groups that participate in this meeting? Take the presenter. The presenter. So we got the moderator, Ted. The presenter was Blake. Who's the third people group? The the, pre, the group, the, the members, the attendees. We're going to talk about those three groups and the responsibility of each of those three groups. First of all, let's understand our market. Our market is different than any other real estate market. Tell me why that is. What's different about this meeting than the CREM meeting, which stands for Commercial Real Estate Market Network, CREM. CREM. What is different about this group than LoopNet? What is different about this group than any other group? Lance? What's client-based? What? Say client again. Client-based exchange, 1031. <coughs> so we heard client, client-based. And what does that mean, Hugh? Client-based means that the person who is your client is just as important as the properties they're dealing with because they have so many they can have many different kinds of properties they could have many different things that they could bring to the table so when you go on loopnet and you want to find why somebody is going out of title which button do you push <laughs> there's no button oh you call the broker and they tell you i don't think so <laughs> so we are client based, information driven, motivation driven group. Is the property any less important here than in any other group? No. It's just not the only thing. So we're driven by people. Exchange is important here. So if you ask my license plate is BL blank 1031. Every once in a while, somebody will go, oh, you're one of those facilitator guys. I give you the money. Say yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> give me the money. <laughs> so most brokers think a 1031 is, I'm talking about not here, most LoopNet brokers, CB Richard Ellis brokers, what do they think a 1031 is? It's a tax-free exchange. Tax-deferred exchange. It's a sale. It's a cash sale. I have a client right now with 1031 money under contract, not closed. And guess who I'm calling? LoopNet. C.B. Richard Ellis, all those guys. I say, I've got a 1031 client. They think cash. They think that there's a buyer there, and they're correct. 
Now, in order for that to be a 1031 means my client had to do what? Sell. Sell. Sell a property. Transfer the basis. Buy a new property. That's what their market understands. What does an exchange mean to this group? Simultaneous Could be what? Simultaneous. Simultaneous. So instead of deferred, we're going to say simultaneous. And we're going to say equity. What's equity mean? Value of less than debt. It's your value of the property less the debt. We're trading the equity. What was Blake's equity in his property that he presented? How much debt? It was all equity. What was Sandy's equity in his property, approximately? Two million. Two million, one million debt, one million equity. Was Sandy selling a two million dollar property or a one million dollar equity? In this room, he's selling a one million dollar equity because that's all he's got coming back because the bank wants their piece. Out there, it's a two million dollar property. They don't care what the debt is because when you bring in cash, you have to pay off the debt. Our marketing group is different here. So if you're a moderator, if you're a presenter, you've got to understand the differences or you're wasting your time probably being here. What are the other differences? Why are we different? It's more, it's more about benefits and detriments of the property itself and what the client needs. So benefits, motivation, Solutions, is cash a solution? Normally, but if there's not enough cash, do you still want to do a deal? Absolutely. So when we're moderating, if Blake said, I have this $335,000 property for sale, I want cash, do we need to spend any more time on that property? I don't think so. You can say what it is, it's 600 acres, it's located 20 miles from Winnemucca. I want 335,000 cash. All the people that are interested can get with him in about 10 seconds and say, I'm interested, I'm not interested, we're done. In this room, it's nice to know, can they take cash, is there a tax consequence? But then you start the marketing after you're done with that part. In the other world, you start and stop with the price, the net, the, the net income, and the cash flows. That's what they're trying to get to. Any other differences between our market and the other? One that I like is that we cooperate with each other versus compete. What's that mean? Collaboration. Are we competing? Is, is the bucket half full or half empty of deals? It's half full. If, if there's a limited amount of cash and I'm a cash selling broker, I'm competing with you for the cash. If we're transacting business based on ideas and solutions, the more we have, the better. So we're cooperating with each other versus competing for the limited amount of cash. Even in this market, with a lot of cash, there's a limited amount of cash. So most of the market competes uh, for that cash. Um, okay, there's, there are three players uh, that we talked about. What is the uh, goal of the moderator. Create offers and ideas. Create offers. Create ideas. What's the goal? And I see some people taking pictures of this. My son taught me that. You don't have to take notes anymore, Dad. Take a picture. <laughs> well, we're going to fill this up, so you might want to wait, and we'll take one picture at the end. Bring out uh, benefits too. Disclose motivation. Motivation, bring out the benefits. 
So if you're a moderator, you are moderating, you are counseling the counselor. The job of a good moderator is to counsel the presenter. So you're trying to dig out everything that that counselor knows about the property, the people, the solution, the situation and the solutions. If you're a counselor and working with clients, aren't you doing that exact same thing? You're finding out all you can about the property, the people, the ownership, the situation, and the solutions. So the only difference, I think, between being a good moderator and being a good counselor is the amount of time that you have to do your job. Somebody repeat that back in your lingo. What's that mean? The only difference between a moderator and a counselor is the amount of time you have to do your job. Now there's another difference. There's another difference, and that, and that is that with a, with, a moder, uh, with a good moderator, they're going to create enthusiasm for the product, as opposed to a counselor who's just trying to get words this kind of coming from. Okay. So I think there's, I think there's a, and that's there, really there can be other, and there's other differences, but the, the goal of a good moderator is I got this much time, I got to get out the motivation, the benefits, uh, the situation, I got to get to solutions. I have six to ten minutes to do it. As a counselor, how much time do you have? You've got the first hour you meet, which is a listening session, not a listing session. A lot of us try to get the listing in that first hour, but what we should be doing is listening. You've got the second meeting. You've got the next meeting where you're presenting offers. You've got the next meeting when you're trying to negotiate a contract. You've got lots of time as the counselor. The moderator's got 10 minutes to get it out. Um, somebody, well, Blake, where are you? You asked me to be your moderator today. Out here, what did I say? Maybe. <laughs> Why would I say that? Why wouldn't I just go, oh, of course, I'd love to be your moderator. Because sometimes it's like playing handball against a wet blanket. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'll repeat that. It's like playing handball against a wet blanket. <laughs> Nobody hits it back. It doesn't come back. That's not uh, true No, no, that's not true. But here's, let's see, somebody else in this room, and I won't give Joe's name, but he said, <laughs> he said, would you moderate this package? This was months ago. And I said, why? He said, you did such a good job last time. I go, huh, Joe, you need a different moderator. Because if I had done my job last time, what would have happened? Offers, deals. Now, that doesn't mean every time you stand up and present, you're going to close, no matter who your moderator is. But there, you shouldn't always moderate. Now, had I moderated that package three or four times, I would have told Blake, no, I'm not, I'm not going to. I didn't know what deal he was talking about. If the property had no benefits or I thought Blake's looking at this unrealistic, I probably would have said you can get a better moderator than me. So you don't have to moderate every package that somebody asks you to. If you can add value, if you can help that presenter be the best that they can be on that, at that time, then you want to be their moderator. You're going to hear that or see that three or four times. Our job as moderators is to make the presenter the best that they can be where they are right now. We've got one young person in here whose license is 17 days old. We've got, Gordon, how long you've been in this meeting? 47 years. 47 years. Do you moderate those, this, those two people the same? They're totally different. Which one has the best chance of doing a deal? 
<laughs> maybe, maybe, because it has nothing to do with how many days I've had my license. What does it have to do with? How, why does somebody get a deal? I got to finish at this point. I've got a real quick story. So my, Talk real loud so they can pick my, it up. My, uh, I came to this group initially because it broadens your perspective when it takes a one-dimensional business and turns it three-dimensional, which expands your opportunities. I called my sister-in-law. I called my sister-in-law. I said, I need a junior broker because I'm just falling behind. I need someone that's young. They have no real estate experience but they got a work ethic. And I think that person has just the enthusiasm and the coachability, the ability to do more in a shorter period of time versus me that gets set in my ways over a period of time. That's the beauty of this, of a good moderator is they expand your perspective on, hey, maybe I could do a deal about 50,000 ways. That's so I think the best job of moderating that I ever did was at a national NCE Las Vegas meeting. Um, a fellow by the name of George came up, some of you know George, and said, Ted, would you moderate this package? I didn't say maybe, I said no. George, I won't moderate your package. He said, well, why? I said, George, because we're going to spend the time and we're not going to get anything done. Because George would not listen George would not answer questions. George would always stand up and just pitch his deal and sell it to the audience about why this was the best deal ever. And then he would tell the audience how to write the offers. And I said, George, how many times have you presented this? How long have you owned this? How long have you had your office in this retail center in San Diego? So uh, 15, 20 years, you know, it's been presenting it kind of off and on all that time. And I said, George, I will be your moderator if you'll let me moderate you, which means you can't say anything unless you answer my question and only answer my question and not go down a rabbit trail like you normally do. Now, George and I had a good relationship personally so I could say those things. But we moderated the package. I told him every question I was going to answer. I knew every answer he was going to make before he made it because we pre-moderated. He got several offers and he closed out of that meeting because George allowed the moderator to do his job. That's our job up here is to help the presenter be the best they can be. George was one of those 40-year guys. You help them be the best they can be. I'll beat on Blake a little bit who's trying to say something, but once in a while, Blake will give you the solution to his deal. In fact, he always does that. That's okay at the end, but you turn people off who have different solutions that may work for his deal. But when we get people that have a real high IQ and a lot of real estate experience, they know the best way to do the deal in their mind. So they want to share that with you so you can do it that way and then it'll close. But a moderator won't let them do that. Moderator will let them show their benefits, discuss the motivation, come to some solutions, and try to create commerce or discussion between uh, buyers and sellers. Okay, we talked about the goal of the moderator. What, what's the role of the moderator? What's the role of the guy asking the gal asking the questions? A little different than the goal. He needs to stay on track. He needs to, and take control of the person presenting. I love that word, louder. Take control. Con control, control. Okay. What else? We need to give the audience uh, something that they can follow. Um, all of us understand real estate. 
every basic exchange group follows the same pattern because it's worked for 50 years. And that is to talk about what first? Property. The property. Because everybody, no matter what your level of experience, everybody understands real estate and wants to talk about real estate. And it's easy to get a presenter or a client to talk about their real estate. When you're counseling your client and getting the listing, if you start off with, what's the matter with the ownership here? What, what are you trying to accomplish? They're not gonna go there. If you start talking about the real estate, they're comfortable with that. So with a client, with a presenter, always start talking about the property because that's the easiest place to build rapport and, and to get people to understand. So we want a kind of a system and that system is property, people, also known as ownership, situation, and what's the last one? If we start here, it makes no sense. If you start with the problem, once in a while it makes sense to get people's attention. And that is, hey folks, I've got a client or a presenter here whose client has to have a solution at the end of this week. Well, that gets everybody's interest. They're paying attention, but you still gotta come back and talk about the property and the people. So normally the, the role of the moderator is to have a system. Um, normally the role of the moderator is to um, have some empathy. Empathy, not sympathy. It's not sympathy. <laughs> now that's very good. Well, that comes afterwards. <laughs> that comes afterwards. Um, uh, support, etc. So the role of the moderator is to get this presenter to be comfortable, to be open, to share, and it's to do the same thing with the group, to get them comfortable, for them to be open. We had several good sharing ideas today. Um, a lot of solutions don't come from writing a mini offer. They come from uh, somebody saying, have you thought about this? Joe Dunn is always good at, have you thought about this? Here's another way to do it. So, Yo. Is it important for the presenter, not the moderator, to remember this format too? Is it so important? I'm skipping ahead on you. Is it you don't allow them to. Do it. If you have control, you don't allow them to skip ahead on my So the question is, good question. Should the presenter know about these? Should the counselor, when you're out getting the listing, you got to be thinking, I'm going to have to cover these at the meeting. I better get all that information. But when I'm at a meeting and the moderator doesn't quite know what they're doing and they go, tell me about the people, I don't answer that question. <laughs> I go, well, the property is because I know we don't, it, this doesn't work to start there unless in pre-moderating we have said, Here's why we're gonna do people first, because it's such an interesting client and they can do so much. Like let's say my listing is with Phil Anschutz. I might wanna start with that, because everybody's gonna to wanna to listen. Well, what does Phil have? Then you go back to the property. But the presenter wants to be able to overcome a bad moderator. And you can overcome that by just clicking through these things and knowing knowing what you're doing. So, and that's why, so the Reno form, this is called the Reno form, named after Dick Reno, who uh, was one of the original organizers of the exchange meetings, um, made these forms that talked not just about property, 
but about the property, the people, the benefits, the motivations, um, to give you a, a framework to, uh, to follow. Why do you people come to this meeting? Give me 10 reasons why you come to the meeting. Coffee and donuts. To make money. <laughs> I'll guarantee you, half of you would rebel if Neil didn't bring donuts. You would be upset. Thank you, Neil. Oh, look over there. Let's pan. Can we pan over here? Pan way over here. Ta da! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your money being put to good use. Thank you. I guarantee you, social donuts, coffee, just feeling good about yourself. It's why some people come. That's okay. Why else? Brain power. Yes. Uh, expand on that, please. Just, to, you know, I can look around through here and I say, boy, if I need industrial, there's a the guy. If I need land, there's the person. If I need something in the springs, there's a the person. If I need a sale, lease back, leasing agent, uh, lenders, attorneys, builders, so we have expertise, we have, uh, let's see guys, I don't know how to do this deal. Can anybody help me? How many ideas would come out of somebody trying to help you do? More, I think I've made more money from ideas than deals here. And I still do two, three deals a year. Joe. It's really a brain trust. And the, and the reason I call it a brain trust is because it, it it, it, uh, it's a very positive one. In other words, people are trying to help each other make a deal. And so many times they'll go to other meetings and it'll be, well, I don't want to tell anybody about this because I want to get the deal. It's a competitive. This is absolutely the opposite of that. It's kind of how can we help somebody else make a deal? More than anything, this meeting provides motivation to get back into the business uh, every every morning we wake up and we're we're looking for a new job, and so often we forget about the things that we actually have in our in our uh, inventory. And uh, listening to the discussion uh, will bring back to our minds why we're actually here. Thank you, Ray. As a newer broker, uh, I come to work from this great bunch of people to be a better broker. So I just want to be better at whatever I do. Every morning I get up, I should want to be a little better at something, and Wednesday mornings is a good, good morning for all of us, yes. I think. Why else do we come to the meetings? Uh, uh, knowledge and energy for me. Um, as a newer broker as well, you know, I've heard all the stories about being out of the business within a few years or so, but uh, by coming to this group, I see a lot of great experience and you all have been in it way beyond the two years, so it's very motivating and uplifting for me. So where'd that forty five year old guy go? He lost he ran out of energy, he had to leave. <laughs> he said he was gonna have to leave early. Pardon? Coffee. Does anybody need more caffeine? Feel free. Go get it. Go get it. Um, how about to market our problem properties? Somebody, somebody say something about that. <laughs> problem people. Yeah, problem ownership. There's no bad property on the bed. Owners. Um, I once heard somebody say, and this is what you're talking about, there are no bad properties, there's only problem ownership. But they haven't seen some of my properties. There are bad properties. Yeah, there, there are bad, bad properties. Um, so it, I know that we get brokers that come in here when they have a listing they can't sell. And then they don't come back until they have another listing they can't sell. I think that's doing them and us a disservice. They should be in here all the time. But I understand why you want to be here if you've got a listing 
that doesn't sell because we'll figure out a way to get you an offer. We may not figure out a way to get you a sale, but what we will get you are what? Ideas. And those people that want to make offers are called, what do we call them instead of buyers? Takers. We will create takers that they have not had an offer, a taker, for several months. Yes, sir. How many times have, and I always say, so people, when do you go to that meeting? I said, you're going to see people and properties that you're not going to see anywhere else. I'll say, is this in the MLS or is it in the commercial database? No. Is it here? Yeah. So, Don? All those people. Real loud. Those people and those problems and the property in both of those arenas are opportunities for those that want to come and that are looking for an opportunity. They're looking for something to solve, looking for something to, where they can add and be a taker. I come for the opportunity, look for the opportunity if I'm not a presenter. <coughs> Uh, if you go to most meetings, most broker meetings, I would say you're not going to find a quote unquote opportunity, value add kind of deal. Because they're kind of, they're already priced at the retail out price and they're chasing cash and their client has not said, get me out of this deal. Uh, whereas here, if you bring a vacant, a uh, building, half vacant building, a building that's had fire damage, a building that has any kind of problem, an environmental problem, are we going to say, oh, we don't want to hear about your real estate, it's got problems. We're going to say, come on, bring another one. We like to solve problems. We like opportunities. Now, it needs to be priced to where there's an opportunity for the person that can solve the problem. But we love those kind of properties. So, last. So come to be a better broker, better broker. What are the responsibilities of the participants? What's your responsibility when you come in, into the room? Not why are you here, what's your responsibility? Drink the coffee and don't get it all gone. To get enough information from your client that you can respond intelligently or when you have a question to the So there, that's the presenter. The participants, though, have the same responsibility. You need to, you need to come with well-counseled clients so that you can be a fill in the blank so that you can be a taker so that you know what benefits your people are seeking so that when the presenter gives us a package of benefits you go free and clear let's see divisible that's the benefits my guy needs because what my guy needs is off of debt so any package of benefits that gets my client off of debt, I need to be here participating and making offers. What are the responsibilities of the participants? You know what a, Don, tell us what a black hatter is. I'm not picking on you. Huh? What's a black hatter? Somebody that takes a negative approach or takes a property or that presenter um, hangs them around a little bit. Sometimes that black hat's a benefit, sometimes it's not. Somebody did. That... At some of the national meetings, we kind of have fun with that, and we'll actually have a black cowboy hat. And when somebody says something negative, there's a black hat right there. <laughs> Maybe it's brown, it's a little brown, but when, when they have a negative comment or um, well, George, you've had this property for 20 years. Why are we listening to it again? Give him the black hat. <laughs> a better way to say that is, George, you've presented this 20 times. What has changed to help us write you an offer 
that's different, not a black hat. So um, your responsibility is to be positive. Now, let's say somebody's up here just spewing crap, and we get some of that. Is it our responsibility to receive and accept and grin? No. no. <laughs> because we want this presenter to be what? The best they can be, and they can't be that if we're just getting crap. So we got to help them understand, before you present again, you need to go back and get the following answers. Don is, Kramer is real good at giving somebody three or four questions. Go back and get these answered for the next time so we can help you do a better job. If you get I present presented a property, not in this forum, um, uh, just a for sale property to a NCE out of state broker. There's a little 12 unit I've got. And, and she goes, Ted, how come you're not showing the taxes on your income and expense statement? I go, well, I probably should be. We can all learn and grow. And I found out it was under the bottom, uh, under the, the mortgage payment because the lender was paying them. And we needed to pull that out and put it above the line. I've never presented a property where somebody in here didn't have a question I didn't know the answer to. And you got to go back and get that answer. You never learn everything there is about a property. Um, any other uh, obligations or responsibilities of the participants? Uh, sometimes I'll come into the meeting and I'll open up this thing and I'm sitting in the back and I got an email and I'm responding to the email and the moderator and the presenter are up here going away at it and. I'm not interested in that property, but I'm not doing my responsibility, which is to help make this presenter the best that they can be. I'll have an idea. I'll know a contact. I'll, I'll have something that can help him if I'm engaged in the meeting. So we've got to stay engaged. Okay, what's the responsibility of the presenter? What's their job? We got the moderator, we got the participants. Why am I doing the presenter last? Are they the least important? It's not about presenter. I put them last because they would not could not do this meeting without the other two. It's not that they're least important, they're maybe the most important because they bring the inventory, but without a moderator and without this group, we don't have an exchange marketing meeting. We don't have a creative marketing meeting. So this presenter can know everything that there is to know about the property, the client, the solutions, blah, 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 but if they don't have the forum, a good moderator, an engaged audience, no need to come, no meeting, no value. So what is, the, what is the obligation, the responsibility when you become a presenter? Steve. Listen to the moderator and, and answer his questions, not what you want to talk about. Listen to the moderator, assuming the moderator knows what they're doing. Most cases they do. That's why we're here. <laughs> Uh, allow to be led. What's her name? What's your wife's name? Susie. Susie. Allow to be led unless the moderator doesn't know what they're doing. Then you need to know what you're doing. Be prepared. What does that mean? That means having a well counseled client and a thorough knowledge of the benefits of the property? Probably the most important thing, if you don't come in here with a good, thorough understanding of the client, of not having, what, what does well counseled mean? Does that mean they do what you want them to do? I know people that thinks that's what a well counseled <laughs> client is. That is not a well counseled client. What is a well-counseled client? 
person oh, so is. it's important. We just don't know what it means. <laughs> what? The person that understands all their options before they make a decision. They understand there are multiple options in addition to here's cash for your deal. Fine. I think it's, I think it's somebody who's been qualified. I mean, uh, it's easy to be a yes man and say, sure, I'll go get you a left hand purple squirrel and I'll go sell this because I just want to. So qualify. So you challenge someone and say, what about this? What about that? And you say, no, yes. You don't say, why not? Or challenge that. You'll peel back the onion. Find out what's important. Okay. Wait a minute. It's somebody that understands that not making a decision is making a decision. They bought it back every time they say no. So, a decision, they need to become a decision maker. Cliff? I would say a client that understands the difference between wants and needs. Oh, that's a good one. So when a client says, I want off of this, no, I want a income stream, and the question might be, role play with me, why and what do you, do you need an income stream? Or do you need off this negative cash flow? Do you need off the debt? What's your need? Our wants are always higher and bigger than our needs are. Our needs are more important than our wants are. So clearly identifying what do you need, Mr. Client, and what do you want? What are you willing to do, Mr. Client, to get what you want? Go, Steve, you're on. When I started this business, I, my broker was Alice Marsh. She said, you got to do one thing. You have to go to the exchange group. I, was, I said, what's that? She said, you'll find out. And so, you know, I was pretty confused at first and everything like that. But she said one thing. She goes, with an exchange, you always don't get what you want. You get what you need. And I've always carried that with me. So it, it goes back to... So in Rolling Stones song to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing a disservice not only to the client by not, by not getting them to, to understand where they need to be. You're doing a disservice to them, and you're doing you're a disservice to yourself for wasting your time. That's all we have is a tool is our time. And every time a broker meets a client applicant, it doesn't always work. So when they walk into your office, it may not be a listing. You talk and you figure it out. Joe? Yeah, I think the, the four words, the four words, yes, if, versus no, because. And if we do more of the yes, if, we get, we get to where they want to get. So it's the, a little more positive approach to the same exact answer. Yes, if. As opposed to no, no because. because. <laughs> I have one. Don, Don. To, Mark's, to Mark's question, first, they don't care what you know, Mark, until they know how much you care. Ross? Um, I have a little problem with even the word ally. Sometimes with a client, I think we're leading to a large extent. There's an old expression, the customer is always right. It doesn't apply in this business. Somebody told me that a long time ago. There's a lot of truth to that. And a lot of times they'll know what they need. One more question, Blake, then we're going to keep moving. Just a comment, which none of us are, and I, you know, still always learn this in the hard way. None of us ever do anybody a favor and try and take on a problem that you can't solve. And a million dollar listing is probably a problem you can't solve. The $900,000 listing is one you can. You just don't hire the client. I have a problem with that. Yeah. I have a client with a 12 and a half million dollar house in Santa Fe. Eight years ago, I took that listing. <laughs> it was 15 million back then. I go, I can solve this problem. Well, he's not really a client anymore, but he still has the property. And what I learned from that is kind of what you're talking about. But it's also work with clients that are motivated. 
you know billionaires don't have a whole lot of motivation <laughs> to get out of a piece of problem real estate, which is a $12 million free and clear vacant house? To me, that's a problem just paying the taxes each year. It's not a problem to a billionaire. Work where there's motivation and where there's solvable problems. We got so dang many questions. What's next, Jay? That um, there was a gal that taught uh, the gold cart course. Don't right tell now. me what you won't do. No, Is that no? Said, okay. No, it was, uh, don't put more energy into solving your client's problem than they're willing to put in. Don't put more energy into solving your client's problem than what they're willing to put in. Right. Was that D? Fountain? No. D used to say, I don't remember her name. Don't no. tell me what you Candace won't do. Something or something. Tell me what. Oh, uh, from Reno. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Next idea. The market determines the value of a property, and it's a matter of exposure. Uh, one of the greatest lines I ever heard is the market has rejected your price. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use that? The, the market has rejected your prize. That's a good one. Somebody else that's got their hand up, shout it out. Somebody else was back there. Okay. I like that one. Uh, but D. D. Fountain, uh, who's probably deceased, was an exchanger. And um, she would say, don't tell me, Mr. Client, what you won't do. Tell me what you will do. I think there's some wisdom in that, too. So and let's see. Let's keep moving on. Presenter, what's the responsibilities? Did we get? I think we kind of got that. So if you're the presenter up here, What's the main thing you need to give out to the group? What's the main thing that they want to hear? Benefits. 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 You don't want to write an offer on a property that has no benefits or on a property that doesn't have the benefits that you're seeking for your client. So if, as a moderator, I want to bring out the benefits in what? The property? What are property benefits? Name them. Income. Income. Location. Location. Cash flow. Cash flow. Ability, to Ability to subdivide or divide. Tax deferment. Tax deferment. Okay. There's still a tax write-off in real estate. What else? Easy fix-up. Fix-up or upside. Upside to the increase. Okay. Yeah. Property benefits. So Blake was up here with a property that had a couple benefits. And, and I asked, you know, what are the benefits? Three guys said the owner. The owner, the owner, the owner. So people benefit. As a moderator, as a presenter, as a counselor, as a participant, we've got to be thinking about benefits offered, benefits sought from out there. I'm seeking benefits, I'm offering benefits. Okay, um, so people benefits, what are those? What are those? Motivation. Mm, not going to go with that. They'll be a taker for. What are people's benefits? Can add money. Can add expertise. Can add. Skills. Skills. Signature. Can take on debt. Can add other properties. Will do. Motivated. Likes deals. Da da da. So there are benefits to property and people, and there are third-party benefits. What are those that this person needs to bring out? Third-party benefits. You have contractors. You know, to the people surrounding the building. Okay. So 
neighbors to the property, your brother-in-law might have money, third-party benefit. Um, there's all kinds of other benefits. So when we're presenting the property, the moderator, right after you throw out all the benefits, the moderator may jump right into the problem. That's not a good thing, moderators to be. Right after all the benefits are out, what should you ask the group for? Anything else? <laughs> Interest. Who is a taker? Who is interested? Who is a buyer? Who needs these benefits? Because this person hasn't said yet what they want. They will. A good moderator might not let them, but they're eventually going to say, here's my property. Here's the ownership. What we're trying to do is buy a Walgreens. Now, what happens to the participants when they say we want a Walgreens? They don't have one. Pardon? They don't have one, so they, they don't. They shut down because they don't have what this person wants. So, when you're counseling with your client, when you're presenting the property, when you're moderating the property, right here before you go into the problem, the situation, or the solution, you want to try to activate the room. Because at that time, the room is the most excited about this property as they're ever going to be in the presentation. And they're excited because they've heard the benefits. They've heard every property benefit. They've heard every people benefit. If they can't write then, they're not going to write when they hear the problem or what the person wants. So focus on presenting benefits. As a moderator, focus on pulling out benefits because that's what creates takers. If there are no benefits offered or few benefits offered, what's going to be the result of the meeting? No offers. And did you do a good job moderating? You didn't create any offers. So no matter how it felt, didn't accomplish anything. Did the presenter waste their time? A little bit. Did we waste the time of 40 people, 10 minutes, 400 minutes, six, eight hours? Maybe, maybe not. Present benefits. Clearly identify motivations is the next thing. So that's the situation. So when you're counseling the client, your goal is to find out the benefits that they have, the benefits that they seek, but what's their motivation? So what's our listing agreement say about motivation? Have you read your listing agreement lately? <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Can't talk about it. That doesn't seem right. Why does our listing agreement say that you can't talk about your client's motivation? Do you all know that? Yeah. That it says that? What else can you not talk about? They'll take a lower price. So we all know that. <laughs> Although I've heard people in here say, well, they take a lower price. <laughs> if I'm the moderator, what do I say? They can offer us. I say, not appropriate question. Make an offer. But no, this person cannot say that. So if I can't say, I've got a million dollar listing, and well, what will they take? Oh, maybe eight, nine hundred, I don't know. Make an offer. If I can't do that, why can I not talk about what their motivation is? Because it'll likely be used against you. John? Put it in your listing agreement. Yeah. Put it in your listing agreement that you can talk about client's motivation. If a client does not want you to talk about their health situation, don't do it. If they don't want you to talk about the division of the partnership called divorce, don't do it. But if they want out of the trap, do you want the cheese or do you want out of the trap? 
they may want you to talk about their motivation. That's the trap that's holding them in this deal. They want to get rid of it. Then they just sign this little form that says, Mr. Broker, you can talk about this motivation. Solutions. Uh, we want to make the presenter the best they can be. That's if they're not prepared. That's if they're over-prepared. That's if they've had this listing for two years. That's if they're a first-time presenter. The moderator wants to make them the best they can be with what they carried into the meeting. Take a look at page 13 and 14 at your convenience. A um, couple of these that I like. What would you consider the most out-of-the-box solution? Uh, what type of ownership have you experienced in the past? What is your cash requirement? What benefits do you seek? Uh, what are they going to do with the cash? Sign before they come up here. Or they should not talk about it. Yeah. So the moderator and the presenter, we didn't get to this, should pre-moderate. That means you step out of the room, you spend five or ten minutes going over uh, the property, the what are you trying to accomplish, can we talk about the motivations, has your client authorized you to do that? If I as the moderator don't know and I ask the presenter, why does your client seek to go out of title, they may have to say I can't disclose that. <clears throat> or they need to go get authorization. I just want to throw this out. If you have a property that you really want to move, moderate the day before. Don't wait till 10 minutes before the meeting starts on a Wednesday morning, you know you're going to present it on a Tuesday, moderator on a Tuesday. So meet call, you're it. saying call your moderator? Call the moderator, figure out who you, you want to meet with and have a coffee, lunch, whatever, a week before, a day before. At, do it before you get here so that you're both prepared. At our national meetings, um, they sometimes assign moderators before you get on the airplane to go to the meeting. So you pre-moderate on the phone before you even get there. Joe, question? Uh, comment on uh, people have said that uh, when, when I'll ask them a question, um, what are you going to do with the money? They think it's being nosy. That is not. And in fact, it, it, people say, well, gee, I don't want to ask them that question. That is the fundamental question, period. Is what are you going to do with the money? Because if they can't answer or won't answer that for you, you got no place to go. And the way to diffuse that with new clients is you just tell them up front, we're in a, a very creative marketing group. I guarantee you we will get offers for you. We need to know information that's maybe more than what a normal broker will ask, but I won't ask you anything that I don't think will help you get more offers. Is that okay, Mr. Seller or Ms. Seller? They'll say, well, of course. <laughs> you're, you're looking after my best interest. So what's your first question? What's wrong with your spouse? No, <laughs> I don't, don't want to go. Thank you very much for wanting to be better in the marketplace. <laughs>